to come a little bit early, but we don't mind, do we? And they might not even get joined by anybody because they forgot to put it on. So, oh, we have got somebody in here, Cassandra. Um, <laughs> I thought I was going to be on my own tonight because I forgot to post on my group that I was having one. Oh, we got two, so <laughs> at least there's three of us today. We're all right. There's going to be a few of us. Um, hi, Sally. Uh, Marion, hi, Marion. And Pauline, so hiya. We've got uh, we've got four. We've got a few. I'll I'll still do it. It's my own fault. I've been um been really busy and got carried away and forgot to put it on my Facebook group. So, are you done? And Lynn, are you Lynn? Are you doing? How's your machine? Are you doing lots on it? Are you Valerie? Uh, are you Pauline? How are you doing? Long time no see. I've uh, been very, very busy this week. Um, I'm getting ready for a Chanda, which will be on the 15th, 9am. I don't know what on earth is going to happen, um, whether I'll be doing videos and sending them or going live. I actually, I don't mind so much doing the videos and then just doing um, a live talk on the phone. I prefer that to Skype. I find that when people do the Skypes on TV, they, they just don't seem to work out. So, hiya Jane, how are you doing? Um, so, I would prefer to do a video. Um, hiya Dawn. So, I'm actually hoping that I can because it's nine o'clock on a Sunday and I really like my Sunday sewing. So, um, I'm hoping that I, I can just get away with sending videos in. But we shall see. I think we're going to have to wait and see what happens with uh, other people whether they're sending videos in or whether they're actually um, going to go into the studios. So anyway, what is on my work desk this week? Oof, there's a, quite a pile actually. Um, I've been sewing for the grandchildren as I usually do. Um, I'll just show you this one. Malachi is my little, he's almost two year old. He's two in December. He was another one that was born quite early. Uh, Oh, wow, Kaylee. Kaylee Uxley's just said she's been spending. It wasn't me, Kaylee. I didn't do it. She's been spending money on a Supreme slider and an extension table. Hiya, Jude. Got me gin, Jude. Have you got yours? I've got um, pink gin with elderflower uh, tonic water. It's very nice. Waiting on. Oh, exciting, Carol. She's waiting on V3 to arrive on Thursday. Oh, you won't look back. I loved my V3. And to be honest, the only reason I exchanged it was because Mark didn't know what to buy me for my Christmas present last year. Uh, hi, Hazel. Good, good on you, Jin, uh, Jude. Jude's got her gin. Vicky and Hazel Waller are watching. Hi, Vicky. Uh, Vicky, I don't know what time you get up tomorrow, but um, I am going to pick up my Benina in the morning. So I'll give you a call. And I'll come and pick your machines up and then I will take them with me. So just let me know what, um, or text me when you get up. Perving over the embroidery machines on wood seats, decided I need to learn to quilt. Right, well, Kayleigh, do you know what? Quilting is something that you learn as you go along and I think you're always learning. So I wouldn't cra crave to be an expert, I would just take it slowly and enjoy what you do. I'm going to be doing a little bit tonight, so um, hopefully that will help you out. But you're on your own corner, I'm always here for you, so if you need any help or anything, just let me know. Um, right, so anyway, I was telling you. So this is a little um, car from Cars, it's the Lightning McQueen. He loves his cars, apparently, and he's going to be mechanic, so my daughter says. So this is for Malachi. Um, I just made a little t-shirt. It's probably going to be a little big for him. I'd already made the t-shirt and um, she said he were really into the cars program. So I decided to um, do him a little t-shirt. So that's the t-shirt I made for um, Malachi. Some of you will have seen I did mark a hoodie from his favourite hoodie. And... Um, that was a huge success. I've now got quite a few people wanting them. So 
it's another one of those things that I did from a pattern I'd already, well not from a pattern, I did it from a sweatshirt he's already got. If anybody's wanting to learn how to do it, I'll do that as one of my, um, one of my what's on my work desks, because I have got some more to do. I also took a pattern off it for myself, because I thought it's handy, it's got a, like one of those big pockets at the front, and um, I did uh, Cobra on his, because that's his golf clubs, but on mine I'm going to put something so in related. But anyway, I also did my lunch bag for Malachi, which is the one that extends at the sides out of Car's fabric. Uh, we've got Mater and Lightning on there. So I think uh, when I get that to him, he's going to be quite a happy little boy. These have got the insulated wadding in, so um, he can put cold drinks in or he, he, he can probably fill it up with his cars, I'm sure he will. So I did that one for Malachi and I did for his sister Isla a uh, tink. I know it's back to front but you, you'll be able to see Tinkerbell there. I use made by Jack's own hot copy pattern for anyone who does want to make their own pattern. There you go. Um, so this one is the Tinkerbell and I did this for Isla. So again it's got velcro sides to expand it and um, a little flap at the front with a handle. So she can use that for school because she's actually at school now. Need to save up for an upgrade so I can use the bigger magnetic hoops. That's what Carol's saying. Yeah, I did get the upgrade and it did make a big difference to um, the capabilities of the machine. I do find that if you're going to get the V3 or above, the upgrades are really worth getting for the um, for the memory and for the um, hoops, hoop sizes. So I did those for those. And I've been using my embroidery machine to make some all over quilting. This is from, oops, I've got a little tuck there. This is from um, number five. Is it number five? Extension pack five? I think it is. Uh, anyway, this has got the sewing and the quilting one on. So if you can see on here, it's got Taylor's dummies and it's got pin cushions and cotton reels. And I basically, I've just done it both sides with a layer of uh, thin wadding in between. What I'm wanting to do with this one is I'm wanting to um, make a cover for, if I just turn you around, my, oh, there it is, my cover stitch machine. So basically what I've done is I've quilted a big piece of fabric and... Um, like I say, I laid it up with fabric on both sides, wadding in between, quilted through it. You don't need to use any stabiliser if you're using um, a wadding. So, uh, Carol Llewellyn saying, I like that. That is something that you'll be able to do on the uh, V3 when it comes, Carol. So, um, I have done a video on that, but I will do another one um, because I do think it's worthwhile learning how to do the edge to edge quilting on there. Uh, so I like to do big pieces of fabric like this and then I just cut it down for whatever I need. So this one is for the Janome cover stitch so I can make a cover for that. But then I've been doing, this is a new fabric and if you can see, I'll show you the back. On the back it's got butterflies on this one. This is again from extension pack 5 I think. So this has got butterflies and flowers all over it so it's invaluable for things like this and for your book covers and um, bags and all sorts so this is a fabric that's going on a chander um, in the next couple of weeks so you can see it's got lovely butterflies on there um, in golds and creams and blues and what I've been doing with it I have done it wrong but this is my first prototype so um, I'll show you it's going to be um, a bag, it's like a little old all really, but I've put a zip pocket at the front. My intention is, you know, if you get um, your, your little Game Boy things and you've got your plugs, you want somewhere separate to put your plugs. So bas basically that's slap hands I'm late. Don't worry about it Joyce, we'll let you off. Where can I find the video? Carol, it's one of the, uh, what's on my work desks and it's one of the early ones probably about six or seven I did it with Sharon I don't know if Sharon's watching um, but she may remember which one it is 
I will try and find out for you and let you know which one it is. But like I said, I'm going to be doing it again. I've been doing it tonight on, on this bag. Um, it's got a zip here down the middle and it's got a nice um, big gusset so you can get quite a lot in there. It's got a chunky zip and it's all lined on the inside. The reason uh, I re the reason I don't like it is because I've not done the handle long enough. I, I didn't want a long handle, but I, I did need it <laughs> to be able to get your hand under there. So, hiya Jasmine, I am. So I'm not very happy with it. Um, I may cut the handle off and just use it as a storage bag. Um, but I am doing, hiya Michelle. I am going to do it again. That's why I've been doing some more of the fabric with the quilting. So that's something I've been doing this week. Oh, I've got something else here that I've not shown you. Do you know what? After I've done one of these, I always end up with piles of stuff everywhere. Kira, my daughter, and Laura, my daughter, are mad on Disney. Um, and I got this. Um, uh, what is it? It's a hand sanitizer dispenser um, for my as an in the hoop project for my um, embroidery machine, and it says on it best day ever. Um, so basically, you can just take the uh, bottle out and fill it up, but you clip onto a keyring. So I bought this design, and I'm going to make them for my kids to have hang on their keyrings for the cars, so that they've always got some hand sanitizer. Uh, oh, well, I, Michelle's just saying I bought material today and I will love it. And Sharon is saying it was early on when I started. I think it were, I think it were probably about six or seven, Sharon, um, June, July. Sharon's saying June, <coughs> June or July, uh, Carol. So if you have a look back, you may find it on there. But if not, like I say, I am going to be doing it again. Maybe it's worth sometimes pointing out what I'm going to be doing that day on my What's On My Work Desk. I don't always know what I'm going to be doing, so mm, I can't always tell you, but if I can, I will do. So, what else is on my work desk? Masks. I'm sure it's on all of your work desks. Which of the rulers are best to start with? Keep meaning to message up. Uh, Jasmine, 6th of August, Sharon's saying, Carol, so just have a look at that. Thanks, Sharon, that's uh, much appreciated. Um, I would say one of the multi-rulers, probably the multi-ruler one or the hybrid, they're really good ones to start off with. Yeah, maybe I'd err on the side of the hybrid because it's got a 12 inch long edge for a straight line. So that's probably the best one, Jasmine. Yes, so I'm doing masks. Right. Um, if anybody does want me to show them how I do my masks, please just ask and I will do. I'm just going to have a quick slurp. But what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to take you over to my cutting table. Um, I am charging up at the moment, but I can unplug it. I think I've got enough on there. And I'm going to show you a bit of... Um, Hi, Pat. Did you find your all? I haven't found my all and I am going to explain to people because I've been meaning to, to mention it on here. Um, Vicky, my friend, was very kind and bought me an all and I have got the card here that came with it. See, I've got the card but I haven't got the all and it's called Penco Pens and Turnings. And if you go on pencolhouse at gmail.com, Jonathan Arnold does the brilliant, most brilliant wood turned tools like these here. Um, and Vicky very kindly bought me one. I assume it's named Astronaut and Swazzy. And um, I've lost mine. Yes, Jasmine, uh, make your own because you can wash them and they'll, they'll keep forever then. Um, so yeah. I have got one and it's lovely. It's an absolutely wonderful piece of kit and I've used it so much, I've lost it. So I've got one somewhere, but yeah, um, I'm just putting this on. Can you show us how to make a buff? What's a buff? Sharon, explain to me what a buff is. Um, and if I can, I will certainly show you. So yeah, 
pen, pen call pens and turnings. He does the most lovely um, alls porcelain. Uh, some people call them stilettos and I really do like using um, stilettos for my sewing. Right, I'm just going to carry you carefully, as carefully as I can. I'm going to quick look around my room as I'm going. I'm just taking you over to my um, sewing cutting table, sorry. Right. Right, so now we're here. Let me just raise you up a little bit. And you can see a bit more. Right, so this is my cutting table. Are you sure you've not just tidied that? <laughs> That's how I lose everything. I promise you, I, I you done. I promise you, I haven't just tidied. I do like to try and keep my room tidy. And when I come back down the day after I've done um, a Facebook Live, I can't stand it because it's always a mess. Right. So you might remember last week I was doing the um, ruler work on that quilt. And I decided that I wanted to do some flying gear shapes in between. Hi there, hope everyone is well. Jill says she hopes everyone's well. Hiya Jill, we hope you are too. Um, I think we're all getting ready for a, a lockdown. More sewing. But I think uh, it'll keep us sane. Here, I've got my Aki quilt. Let me just put you down a little bit. Sorry, my phone's pinging. Hiya, Sarah. So this is my Aki quilt, and I've put it on. I like to use this, and I bought this um, when they first, well, when they first came out uh, on Create and Craft over here, because I was just going in for having my hands done, and I thought it might be a while before I could um, use my uh, sewing machines. So I wanted to be able to um, still cut out so I bought the Acuclub Pro because I thought it would enable me to be able to carry on. And basically, I do love it because it does help enormously with cutting out. This is the long two and a half inch strip cutter. So I'm going to cut, actually I'm not going to do that first. I'm going to show you what I do for my flying geese ones. So the flying geese ones, basically you need to have these are from the box, the mix and match cubes. And it tells you in which ones you need. So you've got a number, this is number four, and this one's number five. These go together to make the flying geese. So basically, I keep all my scraps, and where have I put them? They're not there, ah, here they are. So I'm going to make, if you remember, the, um, background of that block was black so I'm going to use black and the black bit is going to be the smaller ones at the edges so all I need to do to work out how big to cut my strips is measure this that edge of that and that's two inch so if I cut some I'm going to do it about two and a quarter inch strips and I could do it on my um, long strip cutter but just for showing you sake I'll just cut one just so you can see how it works so I'm going to cut it just slightly bigger than two inch and what I'm going to do I'm going to lay it down flat on here I hope you can see okay and I'm just going to run actually I'm going to do it that way my block uh, sorry my strip back and forth over the top of that and it'll put up to six layers no problem so I'm going to put my cutting mat on top and it's an electric one this one. Oh, thank you I know whoever said that I'm busy making Christmas stockings for granddaughters for, for uh, pet rabbits a pet rabbits are having Christmas stockings. Have I got that right? <laughs> and why not indeed? 
So then all these little bits come out and these make all the edges, all the skies for my flying ge geese blocks. So if I wanted to do a lot of them, I would measure from this side to this side and it would cut six, 12, 24 in one pass of the uh, sky pieces. Likewise on this one, if I want to cut all the four, I would measure the widest points and concertina it up on there. But because these are all my scraps, all I do is keep them all and then just try and fit on as many pieces as I can. And I might just get that on there twice. So I then pop that through. You get very little scrap with it, as you can see. Take that out. Oops, some black stuck on the bottom. And then I take these out and you can see I've got all the different geese sections here. So that's what happens with all my little uh, bits. So I take that off and as you can see I've got quite a pile of different colours. So what I'm going to do is um, make as many different colours as I want and then just make them into geese blocks and then just um, put different colours down. Also, you can see, if you haven't got pieces big enough, like this is a off-cut of a strip, I can lay it that way, and so long as it covers the middle, I know that I'm going to get my full pieces out. So I'm going to do six on that side. Now, because I've got six layers on that side, I cannot cover this bit up, but it's not to worry. And if I was clever and organised, I could actually put them both through and put the core through at the same time. But I'm just going to cut a selection so I can show you how you then put them together. Now obviously these are the side pieces that's left from those um, geese blocks. So you could actually keep those for smaller bits on a quilt. But I'm not going to today. Just for speed. So you only get really tiny bits of um, off cuts. Uh, these are quite big ones, so I'm going to put put them all up straight on top of each other. So that's two, three, four. And I apologise for my phone. Top on there, push that through. I think these have come from a jelly roll or something. But it's a good way of using up all your little bits anyway. Oh, we've got fireworks going off. So when I take this off. see I've cut all them out but if I just cut that bit off there and there I've still got all those scraps there that I can use so I can still get quite a lot out of those bits there and on here then I've got all those colours and all those four times just with one pass for me to make my um, geese. So I've got some there. I'm just going to cut a few more of the um, sky parts out. Just so that I can make a few up. Before I go to the sewing machine, I want to do, I'm just going to do another quilt. I'm going to do um, an attic window quilt. I want to put it on my door so that the door looks like a window. 
Well, that sounds a bit crazy, but my door's just a wooden door and it looks a bit, hmm, you know, not very nice. So I wanted to make it look like something a bit better. So I bought a panel and it's an Henry glass one. And I've measured it and cut it up into sections. Now I worked out that this is what it's going to be like. So you can see it's a winter scene. Um, and I, what I've done is I've put, I've got five strips going down and then I'm going to sub cut these into eight inch squares. So I'm going to make um, an eight inch square, which will become 10 inch square um, attic window quilt to go on my door to look like a window. So I've worked it out that I need to cut these into eight inch sections and I want the two and a two inch sashing strips to become the window panes, uh, not the panes, the um, frames. So what I'm going to do is I've got my long, um, I can put for two and a half inch strip cutter. Now on here you can put a full width of fabric, you just place it on the line and these are just some off cuts I've got. So it has got a line at the top here. So I'm just putting it level with that. And I'm going to cut some strips. Now somebody's already been cutting into this, but it's not a problem. I will still get some strips out of it. And again, I can cut six. So I'm going to fold that over. I can see where the strip is so I can get the best out of it without much waste about there so that will do and I've got a long cutting mat here which is going to go on and that is going to go through now this one takes quite a while to go through because obviously it's um, quite a long day turned it off before but I obviously hadn't. Right, so I'll take that off, slide the top off and because it's well used this mat they've slid with it. So now you can see I've got loads of two and a half inch strips that can be used for jelly rolls or jelly roll rugs. Uh, that's obviously a smaller one so that's an end piece but I can still use it for something else. I only want the full ones. So these side pieces are not quite two and a half inch. So I'm just going to put those to the side and just take these here. Right, so they're going to become the sashing parts of the attic window. But obviously for the corners, now I've looked into it and I did see that they wanted you to do a mitre on it but if you've got dies you don't need to do a mitre so i looked at what size die i would need and in my block this is the eight inch block because i'm starting off with an eight inch one i worked out that if i went these come like this sorry so you can see inside and each block each cube has got two of these and then they've got eight different blocks inside and on each one it shows you all different things that you can do with it but this is the one that I needed for my half square triangles for an eight inch block you, d you do learn as you go along you just by looking at the instructions and by trying a uh, trial and error really but if I cut these out of both of those colors as well then I know that this is going to fit exactly with what I want so those off cuts that I have there I can use some of those because I want both colours so I should get six twelve out of that one I use the small mat to pop that through so I also need some of the light grey as well and I want to cut it along the 
Okay, so if I cut this three inch, then I know it's going to be big enough to go in there. And you don't have to worry about doing any mitres then. It, you can just do it straight off. So if I slip that off, you can see I've got loads of half square triangles. So now I obviously, obviously need the other colour to go with that. So I'm going to take the lighter grey. So this is going to look like a shadow on the uh, window to make it look like it's an actual window pane. So again, I'm going to do 12 at a time. That should be enough just for me to show you anyway. No elbow grease in that cutting, is there? So I've got all those and all those. So now we're going to go over to the machine. And that's the waste that I've got. Quite happy with that. Turn the machine off. And you can see it folds up quite small. You can have much room on your desk. But that is my half square tri triangles and that are these are my strips. I do need to cut number four layer out into eight inch blocks before we go. So I'll just do that first. Just make sure it's all straight. So we're cutting it into eight inch. Chop the robin in half. So we've got one, two, three. Right, so I'm just going to take these back around here and then I'll come back for you. I'll not leave you there on your own. There we go. You might be too high, but I'm not just going for my gin. Right, so a little bit of quilting. I remembered what you said last time about you, it being better from the, I will just lower you down a bit, um, being a bit better from the um, right side. So we'll place you there. Right. I will move my jewel off because you can't see from that there. Right, so before I start, I've got on my uh, normal foot uh, sorry, I've got on my quarter of an inch foot and my normal ankle rather than my um, walking foot. I'm going to take off this sole plate because this is a normal sole plate and I want a single hole uh, needle plate, sorry. So if you look there, it's got a single needle hole in the middle. Ooh, I think I need to clean out my machine. Place that on. That is actually what helps when you're stitching and you uh, get your machine, your needle, and not it drags all your fabric into your machine. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute, um, Lynn. Uh, then it makes it all um, free flowing, stops you from catching in inside your machine. There's still air. There was nothing wrong with it really. The threader um, weren't threading. And it has been like that for months. I just thought with it coming to its end, the end of its warranty, I may as well um, take it in and get it sorted. So I was taking the veneer in anyway, so I thought I'll just send it with that. Oh, I needed to cut these into eight inch strips. Not to worry, I will just take it and quickly cut some. Sorry about that, I needed to cut these into eight inch strips, so I will keep talking to you. I'll just quickly pop over to the cutting table and cut these into some 18 strips. I'll turn you around so you can see. But I don't want to keep moving you, so. Because this is, I find, is an easier way of doing a, um, can you see me? Yeah, you can. This is an easier way of doing an attic window. I've never done one before. 
So I was just looking it up and I just thought, I don't want to be messing about trying to do a mitre. And this is a lot easier way of doing it. So I need these at 8 inches. One. I will show you it all when it's finished anyway, but you'll get an idea. So I've done six of those. So I'll do the same with the dark grey. And I am loving it. Obviously you do need to be precise, but um, I guess I'll do the rest precisely. of each there and I will just bring some of those um, flying geese ones as well right so we want it to look like uh, a window so first of all we need I'm going to put the sides of the light and the bottom of the dart which will give the illusion Got my little iron here, which will be fine. So I don't have to keep going somewhere else. Right, so I've got my single needle plate in. I need to put my foot on a quarter of an inch, which I have done. I've got a light grey thread in. And where's this side? Where was we? That side. So I'm going to place fabrics together, push it up to the side of my um, plate on my foot, my guy if that's the word, and I don't want to get all these pieces mixed up because obviously they're going to they're going to continue but that's why I've put the numbers on so each row has got a number on so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this to the uh, border sorry that's my text so now you can see you can't see I've got to turn you around sorry <laughs> Oh, I'm so carried on with what I'm doing. Sorry about that. So there you can see I've got the uh, sides on. Apologies. Oh, I'm balmy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch these two together. So you'll notice that it looks a weird shape for a half square triangle. You've got two flat edges on there. But when I put a light and a dark together, layer those up. They will layer up absolutely perfectly. When I stitch a quarter of an inch, it's going to go from that point there to that point there. So you don't have to do any messing about with this. <laughs> you don't have to do any... I'm sorry, I'm laughing at you all saying take us with you. Um, it will just stitch directly from corner to corner and you won't have any of these odd points on there. So this is where the all that I was on about with um, Vicky would come into um, use. So I'm going to place that. And I don't know if you can see, probably can't, you're not close enough. But that needle now and uh, with the um, fabric up against the um, guide, that needle will go right on that point. You can also do a bit of chain stitching 
um, which if you were doing the quilt, you would be doing chain stitch. And I'm only going to do a couple uh, at a time just to um, save you getting uh, fed up of watching the same thing happening. But I think quilting is such a lovely uh, hobby for something like lockdown. Sorry, my phone's going crazy. There's probably somebody, somebody telling me to turn the camera around. <laughs> When I take that out, you can see it's stitched from corner to corner, lovely. So I'm just going to press these to the dark side. If I've missed any of your comments, then please just um, say it again and I'll try and get back. Hiya, Sandy. Get me. What did you want, Kayleigh? Uh, so there you see, I've got the um, two R square triangles there. So now what I need to do is I need to place one, this end on there. So this is going to give me that mitre that I said that we needed, but we don't have to actually do it because that end is going to go with the light and this end is going to go with the dark. So if I place these together, they match perfectly as well. I'm then going to stitch down the side. If I take that out and press it to the dark side, then the other one that I press to the light side will nestle when I put those together. And well, now you can see, it does look a bit like it's gone off there, but it hasn't. That is because you need a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So when the quarter of an inch is done, that will be right on the point there. So what I need to do now is stitch that piece along the bottom there and it's going to give the illusion so I'm going to place it right sides together you can pin if you like but this is where it needs to nestle and because we've got one seam going one way and one seam going the other they will just nestle together lovely ah is it you texting me Kayleigh <laughs> telling me to turn camera around <laughs> oh you'll get used to me once I'm sewing, that's it, you've no chance. Is it you light fireworks off as well, Kayleigh? Sorry, I had to hold it because I don't want it to go anywhere. But you can use uh, a stiletto, it really helps with um, quilting, holding the points down. take that out and pull the um, seam down you can see you've got a lovely mitre and then that is going to give the illusion of the window pane so this is looking through the window and that is the um, what do they call them window sills no window frame that is the frame so I'm just going to give that a quick press and this way you don't have to do any of that difficult mitering. I'm, I'm lazy when it comes to stuff like this and I just thought I don't want to be doing that messing about trying to get the mitre right. Not when you've got a ackee quilt go but you could even do it without an ackee quilt go just by doing sewing your uh, squares together and then cutting them. So now you can see you've got that lovely attic window effect. So now what I need to do is do the next block exactly the same as this one and then I can add those together. So I'll do one more. So this is the other half of the robin there. So I need to put this uh, light piece to the side here. And you'll notice that it doesn't get sucked into the machine because I've got that single hole needle plate on. So 
that one's going to get, um, hang on, how did I do it? This one's going to go to the border, to the light grey. So I'll just press that to the light side. So that's that one. And get a dark one. Stitch the dark one so that it's continuing on. If you're not sure, just place them side by side. Line up the corners. Yes, I'm getting my banana back tomorrow. And this one we're going to press to the dark side. I do like uh, the Janome. Um, I just prefer sitting in that corner, so that's why I'm uh, eager to get it back. Plus I've got to do a, a question and answer for uh, a chanda and um, um, I want to be sat at my desk so I do need to get it back for that. So now we've got that piece done, we need to add that to the bottom. Lining up the seams here, which should nestle together because one's pressed to one side and one to the other. Like I say, if you want to put a pin in it, you can pop a pin in there. So now I can press that down. And we can stitch those two together. So I've got a little bit left over at this side here. But rather than uh, mess about trying to squeeze it in, I'm going to cut it off. So that goes to that side. So what I'm going to do is lay this one on top of the first one. Line up the sides. if you've got one, a stiletto. And if you find it helpful, you can use a bit of um, best press or something when you've got your blocks completed. So I'm just going to give it a quick little spritz. Also makes it smell nice. seams first and then right so we've got two together now and when you get that up on your wall it's going to look like an attic window so I have done part of the thick row so I'm just going to pin them together just so you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. We'll go into there. So it's not going to be 100% but you're going to get an idea and obviously I will show you when it's all completed. Just put, put a few pins in. 
this one. Right. So as you can see, it's going to give the illusion of a lovely snowy outdoor. So I think that's going to look absolutely lovely on my door. I'm going to be able to look at Robins all day long and what's it called? Winter Cottage. So this is a Henry Glass panel. Um, but I think it's going to look absolutely lovely when it's done. So that is that one. Now I'm going to quickly show you how to do the flying geese once. Obviously it's using the Acrocut Go again. So I'm going to finish that off tomorrow. So I had, I'm going to use the same colour. So you can see how much quicker the Acrocut is going to make your projects. Right, so I've got my sky, which is the black. And I've got all these different colours. It's exactly the same. Take one of your geese, place the sky directly on top, like that. Gonna just press that. I'm gonna finger press it first, but I'm gonna press that then up to the um, sky. So now I take another one, and that's gonna go line up with the edge there. And it's going to overlap the other one on there. So I'm going to stitch from that point to that point. So you can see that's gone over the top there. But when I flip that up and press it, that's going to be your goose and that is going to be your sky. So it couldn't really be, <laughs> Kayla, you don't need to get one. You can fetch your fabric down here as soon as we're allowed to, of course. And um, you can cut out as many as you want. Give that a press. And I'll show you for why I'm doing these. But there is my flying goose block. But you then I'll have all these different coloured flying geese blocks. I'm going to show you why I'm wanting to do it. Oh, I've just found something else that I made this week as well. I made the, what's it called? I can't remember what it's called. It's a little bag that has got a phone pocket on the front. I didn't find it easy at all. I'm going to have to do my own version of it because it's so difficult to do. For some reason, I cut the sides wrong, so it doesn't fit there. Um, I, I like the style of it. I just don't think the way it's made up is um, is really easy or easy enough to understand to do. But I do like it. Um, but I made that this week as well. So the reason I wanted to do all those little flying geese block is if you look on these panels that I did last week, Round the edge here, we've got a border of flying geese blocks. So that's why I want to do... Um, I, uh, bye, Jill. Take care. Yes, it is. It's uh, Gorgeous Girl by Santoro. Um, so I'm wanting to do loads of these to add a border down the side in between a sashing as well. So that's why I'm doing those. So I'm going to be getting on with these and my attic window and um Gillian, i like the style of it i just don't think it was easy to understand how to do it so i think i'm going to have a go at designing my own version of of that and um making it into a pattern so it's something i will be working on but i didn't like how it came together at all um right so i'm going to get off now because it's 10 to 8 and i shall be back next week if i don't put on facebook that i'm doing a live 
take it that I'm doing it. Sorry, I'll, I'll do it so you can actually see me. So yeah, take it that I'm doing it. Um, sometimes I forget when I'm busy. I bought that on eBay last week. Oh, did you? Oh, very nice. Um, so yeah, take it that I'm doing it. I always try and put on Facebook that I am going to do it. But if I forget, forgive me. I'm scatty. Um, I get carried away with what I'm doing. Do you have the sewing machine panel? Gillian, no, but Jean said she saw it on eBay and it was called Vintage... Oh, what was it called? Vintage something or other. Either Vintage Sewing Machine Panel or Vintage Panel. Have a look on eBay, it's on there. Oh yeah, Bake Off's on tonight. So yes, I'm going to enjoy Bake Off. Um, and I will see you all next week. So it's What's On My Work Desk 18 next week. Have a good week, everyone, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.